It's really a situation where, you know, you see these gains and then the question is, are we in a super cycle? And everybody's asking that. And it seems that only people know that they're in a, in a super cycle once it's over with. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. No, I mean, it, it does look, I mean, if we look at the numbers, uh, a lot of commodities are nowhere near their highs, uh, even back in 2011 or even like crude oil. Brent crude 2018 had a high of $86. We're at trading at 66 uh, silver's been moving higher, that's trading around 26, 27, but it had a high of 50 in 2011. Um, palladium as well, um, you know, I know copper's come off, but palladium, we had a high of 18, 19 in 2011. We're only trading 12, 12 at the moment in the US markets. Um, copper, I think, was exaggerated mainly because, uh, in fact, of energy transition. Uh, we're, we're going electric, you know, electric vehicles, etc., reducing our carbon emissions. Um, but all of that needs copper cabling, um, and so that uh, was perhaps exaggerated a bit uh, more than the other metals. I mean, Tom, of course, investors and markets, as a consequence, look six months, nine months ahead. They must be building in a very, very robust picture for the global economy, given what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we are we are definitely seeing uh, a real restocking uh, first in China, Europe, and uh, US. Um, some companies are looking at sort of a V-shaped recovery for commodities at least after the vaccine uh, rollouts, and we're seeing significant progress in that. And I think that has uh, boosted uh, investor confidence. Um, just last week, we continued to see uh, investors, uh, fund management companies increasing their long positions, their buying positions in uh, multiple of uh, commodities, particularly sugar, uh, coffee, cocoa, cotton, uh, which may not be uh, seen as uh, big industrial uh, commodities apart from cotton, but it just means stuff is moving again. Um, my fund, we enable SME size firms in their international commodity trade. And we have seen since Q4 last year, probably a tripling of demand for our support in trade finance. Um, so there's clearly things uh, starting to move again. Uh, Tom, and as things move uh, and we move towards a greener future, you alluded to it with copper and copper prices going up because of uh, wiring demand, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the way, how do you actually play that also with the carbon credits? It's something that you've been getting involved with. Tell us a story there and uh, what really drives this particular part of the market. Absolutely, yes. I mean, end of last year, we kicked off our climate change initiative, uh, first phase, just neutralizing the carbon emissions for all the shipping of commodities. You know, we started to see a massive increase in uh, commodity movement again, which we're helping to finance. Um, and we're seeing even the EU, uh, European Union carbon credits, CO2 credits there, um, trade an average of 24 euros last year per tonne. Uh, you know, for ages, that was actually trading down around uh, just sort of five, eight dollars a ton. Um, and uh, and now we're starting to see um, um, we're starting to see uh, expectations that carbon credits will push up to, say, sixty seven dollars per ton by 2030, which is, you know, only eight, nine years away. Um, and so CO2 credits, both as an investment, um, look interesting as everyone's pushing for climate change initiatives, but also it's a good gauge of uh, real industrial output. You know, companies have to uh, meet certain carbon emissions criteria. If industrial output's increasing, they have to buy those credits. Tom, all things considered, where are the opportunities for trade finance hedge funds over the next few years? Well, I think it's it's in the SME space. Um, you know, it's broadly understood that small, medium-sized enterprises, you know, they um, probably make up 80% of job growth uh, in most countries. Um, they are typically underbanked, um, mainly because of the size of their transactions. Uh, and so we are seeing a lot of um, big trading firms and also fund managers now coming into the trade finance asset class. Um, that's because there is a big demand. Um, there's great yield to be had. I mean, we're, we're netting about 6 7% per annum for our investors the last few years per annum. Uh, very low volatility. 
And we've now seen the fixed income market. You know, there's a lot of volatility in the bond markets, as we could see last week. Um, but the, you know, the fixed income investors, they're also searching for stable yield. And the commodity market and trade finance asset class can offer that. Um, so we just uh, got managed to get a, an investment grade rating for a senior bond issuance, which is coming up for our fund. And that's giving the opportunity for those bond investors to find something which is going to net them a very strong rarock when a lot of bonds are, you know, cash is netting zero and perhaps even negative uh, yields. What are you seeing in terms of those SME deals? Because we know that in terms of uh, uh, the trade finance gap for SMEs, that amounts to one and a half trillion dollars. Uh, it's massive. Um, uh, we're we're among a group of, of companies and group and um, who are now members of the International Chamber of Commerce, the ICC Action Group. Um, and also Digital Standards Initiative, the, the action groups from the ICC, which is one of the world's biggest uh, um, uh, sort of uh, business organizations headquartered in Paris with over 45 million members. Um, they are really pushing to promote uh, trade finance, alternative trade finance, ways of financing, freeing up capital for the SMEs to help, you know, this V recovery, this post-COVID recovery um, accelerate, you know, SMEs, can create jobs, and uh, and we're seeing that with the commodity movements as well, international trade, um, and also the Digital Standards Initiative, which is out of Singapore with the ICC, um, that is actually uh, pushing to get rid of the bits of paper to make things work better. Because we saw last year with COVID, you know, international trade still relying a lot on paper moving around, you know, and if the couriers cannot deliver the bits of paper because of lockdowns and COVID problems. Trade stops.